Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Inside the Dome. I'm Jay Sandus, alongside the Athletic Director here at East Tennessee State University, Dr. Richard Sander, and the goal of Inside the Dome is for us to answer questions that the fans or donors or whoever you may be about ETSU Athletics may have for Dr. Sander. In the first episode, we're going to talk about, I guess the hot topic is uh, men's basketball head coach and the search that's going on for him right now. Yeah, it certainly is a hot topic. It's been keeping, uh, you know, keeping us busy here at, uh, you know, good old ETSU. But I think, um, you know, one of the things that's really been impressive to me is the number of people that have really expressed an interest. I'll bet we probably had 200 people who have really kind of showed uh, a real, real interest in leading this men's basketball program. We've had people who have been head coaches in the SEC and the Atlantic 10 the Big 12, you know, who have talked, who called and actually pursued the job. So I think that tells you a little bit about ETSU and the tradition and history of ETSU basketball. People realize that this is a very good job. It's a community that supports men's basketball and, you know, there's been success here. And I think a lot of people see that we can have a lot of success in the future. Well, the number one question I think a lot of people ask is the the timing or timetable of when it's going to, as as always, Doc, everyone wants to see it go as fast as possible. Well, sure. And I'd like it to go as fast as possible too. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the people that we're talking to are still playing in the NCAA tournament or the NIT. So, you know, they, you know, we've really tried to, um, be sensitive to those teams that are playing right now and you know some of the people that are really involved in it we've talked to you know their bosses and and shared with them that you know there is an interest there and, um, because we felt that you know when we are you know in the future we're really playing and playing at a high level in the NCAA tournament we wouldn't want people to interfere with us so we've really tried to respect you know, those teams and those coaches to make sure that, you know, we don't interfere with, you know, their success. The NCAA tournament is, you know, a, a, a lifetime experience for coaches and players, so we don't want to do anything to detract from that experience. But it does kind of slow down our uh, quest a little bit. Well, the other side of the, the, the court, if you will, on the women's basketball side, obviously Brittany is in her second year, outstanding uh, season, went to overtime with a chance to go to the NCAA tournament qualified for the WNIT and then that, as it goes sort of what you're talking about now I would assume her name is a hot topic around some other schools as far as trying to, to move up and uh, I guess what what's the the balancing act there for ETSU to try to to try to keep coaches up well you know clearly Brittany's done a great job you know I think she's come in here and done exactly what you want a coach to do she's built a culture you know it's not about a team it's about a culture and an attitude and you know setting expectations holding players accountable to those expectations and then you know it's just seeing the way that they responded I think was very um, you know was very rewarding for me but I think it also um, speaks volumes about you know Brittany's talent and her ability to not only coach but you know develop uh, you know program and be a leader within the community she's done an incredible job of reaching out to a lot of different constituencies and um, so, you know, she's, she's the total package, there's no question about it. And actually yesterday we met and um, we kind of came up with a new contract for her. So we're going to sign a four-year contract with Brittany. She had a death in the family, so she had to go back to Nashville. But, you know, when she gets back, we'll have a, a new contract for her. And she's excited about it. She loves ETSU. She wants to be at ETSU. So it's not like, you know, we're... Uh, um, you know, we're, we're kind of opening the vault, which we're, we're certainly going to compensate her for her success, but she also really wants to be here. So that's a good, that's a good situation when the coach wants to be here and, you know, the university wants the coach to be here. So we're excited about that. I know she's excited about the recruiting class that she has coming in. She's going to lose, you know, some pretty good players and Serena Clark and, you know, Dusty Mitchell, but I think, uh, and Kara Bowling and, um, you know, so I think that, you know, with uh, her new recruiting class and, you know, the perimeter players that she's got coming back, hopefully, you know, we'll just continue to build on the success they had this year. 
Well, Coach, the uh, uh, the big thing is inside the dome. What we want to do is want to make sure that we get uh, the questions answered that the, the community and the fans and the donors and everyone wants to know about. We've kind of answered the, the two hot topics in basketball. There's two things in football really want to talk about related, similar, and, and only the fact we're talking stadium. But the first thing, the obvious announcement of the stadium and the fact that we've gotten kind of the green light to go. But what exactly does, does that mean? And again, people look for timetables a lot. So what, what can you kind of give us on that information? Yeah, um, you know, the announcement, you know, was last week. And clearly we've known for quite a while or, you know, we were pretty sure where this whole stadium was going to be sited. But, um, you know, because there needed to be certain approvals through the state, the state has a very systematic um, process that you go through to, you know, a building and doing, uh, you know, a major you know, a, a major initiative like building a football stadium. So we've just kind of had to follow that that process and those procedures. Um, right now, you know, I think um, once again we'll just kind of go back to the state. You know, they're charting the the time frame right now. Hopefully, you know, we'll break ground sometime here. You know, in the next two to three months, and you know, get on with the project. Um, this this is actually kind of a two-stage project. So there'll be one stage to make sure, one of the things we wanted to try to do is to put it in two stages to make sure that we will be playing on campus in 2017. If we had not, you know, there could be um, some situations that occur where we might not make that. But if by going with, you know, two very definitive stages, then we're pretty sure we're gonna play on campus in 2017. Well, that brings up the, the next question, another hot topic. Until 2017, it looks like uh, um, the Bucks are trying to find a home for a couple years. The obvious choice looks like Kermit Tipton Stadium, but yeah. they're still kind of negotiating that. Well, I, you know, we're, I'm not sure we're negotiating. I think, you know, we've done all that. I think basically agreed on, you know, all the, all the basic elements of the contract. The only thing that's kind of holding this thing up you know, just to be perfectly honest, is um, it deals with concessions at Kermit Tipton Stadium. We, as an NCAA member, cannot provide any type of financial uh, involvement to a high school because you know it would be it could you could see where you know if you did that could that could create a really unfair recruiting advantage. So the NCAA prohibits you from doing that. So the question gets to be concessions at Kermit Tipton. We basically, in an attempt to um, do something good for the city of Johnson City, we have basically said, you guys can have the rights of concessions. And, you know, I figure, you know, that would be, you know, think about it, you know, you're going to have 36,000 people um, at an event for four or five hours and I think you'd probably sell a lot of concessions and make a significant amount of money you know I know minor league baseball looks at per capita attendance and figures that I mean, that's one of their big issues is how much is everybody spending at the, the baseball game so I, I would guess if people just spend you know an average of you know buy a, a coke you know and you know some nachos or something probably gonna spend five or six dollars you can figure five or six dollars times 36,000 people that's going to be a pretty big number so you know I, I would hope you know and, and I'm certainly not an expert in this area but I would hope they could probably you know net you know 60 or 70 thousand dollars in revenue so we're trying to do that but you know they seem to you know the city seems to uh, because it's current tipped stadium and I guess uh, the people that run concessions there are one of the booster clubs you know that kind of want them to do it we just you know, from our standpoint, you know, we're pretty clearly um, controlled by what the NCAA says. Well, what we're doing on Inside the Dome, and that'll just about wrap it up for this episode, but every Tuesday morning, we're going to sit down with uh, Dr. Sander. We'll have it posted online every Tuesday afternoon, but we encourage you to send your questions in. Doc, you're up to, to answering about anything that the, the fans or community would like to know, aren't you? I, I'm... I'll be glad to answer anything if I got the answer. <laughs> you know, I don't have a lot of answers, you know, that's one of the problems, you know. Uh, but um, no, I mean, anything that I know, I'll be glad to share. Um, so, you know, I'd encourage everybody, if you got a question, you know, rather than guess or speculate, you know, just um, you know, just uh, tweet it in. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're going to do uh, uh, Twitter's going to be the main way you can ask a question. You can tweet us at ETSU Athletics. 
and you're going to love the hashtag what's up doc there you go <laughs> so you can hashtag what's up doc at etsu athletics you could also email us if you don't have twitter you can email etsu radio at yahoo.com that's etsu radio at yahoo.com monday by midnight is the cutoff and every tuesday we'll sit down with dr richard sander we'll get the questions answered for you doc we appreciate the time this week and i'll see you next week well it's great jay you know i think this is just an opportunity you know and we really want this to be two-way communication you know not just me you know kind of going off on a on a tangent, but you know, answering the questions that you know the, the loyal ETSU fans have about you know what's going on here, and we'll be as straightforward and honest as as we can be. Well, Doc, that'll do it for this week's episode. We appreciate the time. Thanks we'll sure. see you next week, and go Bucks.